Okay, let's continue our lesson and uh, our topic will be about uh, some protocols for uh, flow and error control for noiseless channel. So recall last time that uh, flow control is more on the coordination of the amount of data that can be sent before receiving an acknowledgement. Some assumptions regarding the protocols that we're going to talk about. Uh, first is the focus is on unidirectional transfer and we introduce additional frames. Uh, normally you have data frames which contains the data from the uh, network layer. Uh, we introduce additional frames called acknowledgement frames and uh, negative acknowledgement frame. Acknowledgement frames are frames that uh, come from the receiver to acknowledge the receipt of a frame. Negative acknowledgement are frames that are sent by the receiver to tell the sender that it did not receive the frame it is expecting. Uh, we also introduced the concept of piggybacking. The idea here is uh, the NUX and the AX are included in one frame. Uh, doing so uh, efficient uh, makes us uh, use the link efficiently because in one frame you have both the uh, acknowledgement or negative acknowledgement as well as the data from the upper layer and these protocols are implemented in software so let's start with uh, the first protocol called the simplest protocol as shown in our diagram here so it is for noiseless channel the basic idea of uh, simplest protocol is that it's the ideal scenario meaning we don't have uh, we don't need any flow control we don't need any error control because the sender and the receiver uh, operates smoothly but let's take a look at this diagram here so again you have the data link layer sandwiched between the network layer and the physical layer the data link layer gets its data from the network layer. It constructs a frame and then that frame is sent to the physical layer wherein the physical layer generates the appropriate signals to be transmitted on the transmission medium. So this illustration here uh, follows that path. So you have the data from the network layer goes down to the data link layer to the physical layer and then you have the frames. So it goes to the receiver and then the receiver processes the frame, remove the, the headers and trailers and forwards the data to the network layer. Again, there is a logical connection between the network layer here. There is a logical connection between the data link layer here. And the there is also a logical connection, actually physical connection between the physical layer here. So this slide here shows the algorithm on the sender side. So basically it's just an infinite loop which we, uh, and you have a wait for event here. The event will be basically uh, uh, data coming from the network layer, layer. So when an event is received, a request to send event, it gets the data from the network layer, make the frame and send the frame. So this is the logic of the sender part. At the receiver end, there's also a while loop, and the while loop uh, simply waits for an event. Uh, the event uh, the receiver is waiting for is the arrival of frame. So when an event arrival notification, meaning a frame arrives at the receiver end, it receives the frame, extract the data. Extracting the data would mean removing the header and trailer and then forwarding the actual data to the network layer. So it's better to uh, look at the processing in terms of finite state machines and this is the notation that we're going to use in uh, uh, viewing the operation of the sender and the receiver. So a finite state machine has a set of states and uh, uh, a set of events and the actions to take when that event occurs. Uh, for example, in the sending node, initially the sending node is in the ready state. So that's the start. And when an event occurs, like a packet came from the network layer, 
the sender will make a frame and send it and then go back to the ready state. So in essence, this is the while loop in the previous illustration happening on the sending node. At the receiver end, the starting state also will be the ready state. And when an event, like a frame arrived event, happens, then uh, that frame, uh, uh, the data link layer with the receiving uh, end, at the receiving end, will deliver the packet to the network layer and goes back to the ready state. So this is the while loop, the while through here, the while through here. So in essence, this is uh, uh, a better view of the operation of uh, the simplest protocol. So you you'll notice that uh, this is the ideal scenor scenario, the simplest protocol, because every frame sent from the sender is processed by the receiver. No problems with errors, no problems with uh, flow control. So this is another view of uh, uh, that another diagram of uh, viewing the simplest protocol. So you have the request. The request will come from the network layer. So the sender will construct a frame. The frame will uh, travel and then arrival. So everything is running smoothly in the simplest protocol. But this is again the ideal scenario. And uh, of course, there will be problems during transmission. So the next uh, protocol is the stop and wait protocol. So going back to our outline, so for noiseless channel, we have the stop and wait protocol. Uh, the stop and wait protocol, uh, the operation is the, like this. If the data frames arrive at the receiver site faster than they can be processed, the frames must be stored until they're used. So again, you need to have some buffer to uh, place the received frames. The sender sends one frame until it receives confirmation from the receiver and then sends the next frame. So there is a form of flow control here. Okay? So the sender cannot send immediately. It has to wait for uh, an acknowledgement, a confirmation from the receiver that it is now, uh, it can now send a new frame. Uh, this is the diagram for the stop and wait protocol. So you have uh, two phases. So from starting with the network layer, you get the data, and from the data, from the network layer, you create a frame, and then you send that frame to the physical layer. And then that frame, notice that you only have uh, one frame in transit here, will be processed up to the network layer. And then after processing, the data link layer will send an acknowledgement frame as shown here you have an act frame comparing this with the simplest protocol diagram uh, as shown here uh, the sender continuously sends several frames okay, that can travel across the link because it is assumed here that the receiver can process all the frames without problem now unlike here in the stop and wait protocol the sender will have to wait for an acknowledgement frame before it can send the next frame. Okay, so this is the algorithm for the stop and wait protocol. Again, you have an infinite loop, and then you have uh, this uh, method called here wait for an event. Uh, then, when an event, a request to send event happens, unlike in the simplest protocol, there is an additional condition here, and can send, meaning that uh, this is a Boolean uh, uh, statement. So both of these uh, conditions need to be true. Okay. So uh, what it says here is that the sender can only send if this can send variable is true and there is a request to send. So when all when this statement is true, then it performs the extraction of the data from the network layer, making the frame, sending the frame, and it sends this flag can send to false, meaning it has to wait for the acknowledgement frame. So this is the part here where the uh, sender waits for an acknowledgement frame. And it is only when after receiving the acknowledgement frame that it sets the can send equals true so that 
the sender can send the next frame. At the receiver end, you have again the for loop, the infinite loop, uh, the while loop, and then it waits for the event, the arrival of a frame, uh, receive the frame, uh, extract the data, deliver the data, and then send a frame, which is an acknowledgement frame. So it's better to view again the operation of the sender in the receiver in the form of finite state machine. So the in the receiver end we have two states. We have the uh, in the sender end we have the two states, ready state and blocking state. So we start with the ready state. The ready state is when the the sender is ready to send frames. So starting with the ready state, an event happens. The packet came from the network layer. So what the, what the sender does is make a frame, save a copy of the frame, and send the frame, and then it starts a timer. There is a timer here. Then the new state of the sender is in the blocking state. Now, in the blocking state, uh, when the timer expires, so notice here, there is a timer. When the timer expires, so you have a timeout event. Uh, the sender will have to resend the saved frame. Remember that in this action here, the, the sender saved a copy of the frame. When the timer times out, it resends the saved frame and then restart the timer again. And then it goes back to the blocking state. Okay. Now, when uh, an another event occurs, let's say uh, an acknowledgement was received, but during checking, the acknowledgement was... Uh, was uh, corrupted, then uh, that acknowledgement will be discarded and then uh, the state of the sender will still be in the blocking state. And since although it received, uh, the sender received an acknowledgement but the acknowledgement is corrupted, eventually uh, the timer will time out. So it, uh, the state of the sender will go back to the blocking state. Now when an event happens a new frame arrives which is an acknowledgement frame which is not corrupted which is not corrupted then uh, the timer will be stopped and the saved frame will be uh, discarded and the new uh, the sender can now uh, process or can now begin uh, sending new frames because uh, a successful acknowledgement frame was received now for the for the receiving node, we start with the ready state. Uh, when corrupted frame arrives, basically by checking the uh, the error for errors using CRC, for example, you discard the frame and goes back to the ready state. So you have you only have one state in the receiver end. And then if an error-free frame arrives, uh, the, the receiver will extract and deliver the packet to the network layer and send an acknowledgement frame. So as you can see here, the the sender uh, has a more complicated logic, processing logic, compared to the receiving end because uh, the sending node uh, needs uh, two states, ready and blocking, unlike in the receiving node where you only have the ready state. And this here is another visualization of uh, the stop and wait protocol. So the frame, the data frame transmitted to the receiver and then an acknowledgement, okay, successful acknowledgement and then the frame and then you have the acknowledgement here. Okay, so this is the typical uh, operation on the stop and wait protocol. Now there will be problems with this when uh, frames and uh, acknowledgement uh, data frames and acknowledgement frames are lost because there will be some duplicate frames received at the receiver end and we're going to address that in the next video when we talk about the uh, stop and wait ARQ wherein we introduce the concept of sequence numbers to prevent duplication of received frames.